Hello friends. Welcome to my new video. In this video you will listen 8th lesson Voyaging Towards Excellence. This is an inspirational lesson. Listen and learn from the lesson. In comment section tell me how I can help you to improve your English. Thank you. So I had a very simple upbringing. We were a lower middle class family. Our 300 square feet house did not even have basic amenities such as a fan, a refrigerator, a geyser, a dining table or a gas stove. Leave alone an air conditioner or a car. It was only when I entered the college that I got a watch and we got a dining table and a gas stove at home. Nevertheless, culturally, I had a rich childhood. Poets like Vinda Karandikar, Mangesh Padgaukar and Vasant Bapat used to visit our home and for hours I could listen to the discussions about poetry and literature Marathi and English. They used to talk about Keshav Sut, Mardhekar, Shakespeare, Charles Dickens and Thomas Hardy. I did not fully understand their discussions in depth, but I was immensely impressed. We also were lucky to have P.T. Kumar Gandharv, Pat. Beam Sain Joshi and P.T. Jasraj visit our place and talk about Indian music till late night or sometimes dawn. This is how and why I developed my interest in literature and music during my school days. I did not and even today don't understand the grammar of music, but I began to love it tremendously since then. Most of the times, the topics of discussion at our home were about music, literature, paintings, sculptures etc. I could listen to the discussions about Van Gogh. Mozart and Michelangelo etc. It was because of such a milieu around me that I had a firm belief which I still hold that all arts are equally, if not more, important in our lives than science or technology. I had learned from my childhood that money does not mean everything in life. It is necessary, but if at all there is something which enriches our lives and puts meaning to our existence, it is the arts, music and literature. This is not to say that I did not like science or mathematics. In fact, I loved these subjects. However, I did not study them only for scoring maximum marks in the examinations. I used to study these subjects or any subject for that matter for its inherent beauty. I found Newton's law of motion beautiful and Pythagorean theorem elegant. I loved solving problems of physics and mathematics of the 9th standard when I was in the 7th, not to show off, but just because I used to get involved in solving them. I used to love problem solving and used to enjoy finding out the most elegant method of solving them. Obviously, these problems were not a part of the curriculum, but I enjoyed the whole process. This attitude of looking beyond marks or examinations and to seek joy in solving any challenging problem helped me to develop a problem-solving attitude which came handy when I appeared for my IIT entrance. G. Because this exam is completely based on your problem-solving ability and the ability to think not only logically but quickly and rapidly. I scored 100% marks in mathematics in almost all the examinations that I appeared for from my first standard until IIT, barring only a few times. I stood 16th in the SSC board, at that time, this examination was for the whole of Maharashtra, including Nagpur, and I stood first in the university in all subjects put together. Those days, you could get an admission into IIT without the entrance test, g, if you had secured the first rank in the university. Therefore, I did not have to appear for the entrance test to get the admission into IIT, but nobody in Solapur told me about it, for I doubt, if anybody in Solapur even knew about this rule. Therefore, I appeared for the entrance examination, and I secured a very good rank in the same. I was quite happy getting into IIT, but my joy was short-lived. At Solapur I had not seen any building which was more than three-storied. Mumbai however was full of skyscrapers. At IIT, most of the students and professors used to converse in English whereas my English was very poor. I had my entire education in Marathi. My spoken English was quite pathetic. Not only did I have a very weak vocabulary, but, my pronunciation also was terrible and my construction of English sentences very awkward to say the least. Due to all this, I was feeling quite lonely and terrified in Mumbai in general and IIT in particular. I had developed an inferiority complex and wanted to run away from IIT and even Mumbai. One day, I was sitting at my mess table in the hostel sipping tea when a senior guy came and sat on the chair adjacent to me. 
He was a convent educated guy with fairly sophisticated English at least spoken or colloquial English. He was a bit arrogant and wanted to pull my leg. He tried to engage in some conversation with me and started pointing out errors in just about every sentence or everything that I said. After about 5 minutes he walked away after insulting me. I felt extremely humiliated and upset. As it is, I was feeling quite depressed and diffident and this incident was the last straw. I was almost broken. I felt out of place there and literally wanted to run away to Solapur that very moment. However, it was only my self-esteem which stopped me. Suddenly, a feeling of determination and strength came over me and gripped me. Despite hailing from Solapur, if I could be a rank holder in the school, college and IIT with many awards in mathematics, there must be something right with me. Why should I give up? And that too for a silly and small thing like English? I was not to give up anymore, and I was determined to fight back. As I climbed the stairs of my hostel room, my plan was ready in my mind. Normally most of us who are educated in vernacular languages such as Marathi, think in Marathi, before speaking in English, translate it in English and then somehow try to speak out these translated English sentences in an extremely awkward fashion. I had decided that I would do nothing of this sort. I wanted to achieve excellence. This urge to excel in anything that you try to do has been with me since the childhood. Whether I would succeed in this or not, I always set my aims high. In this case too, I wanted to speak excellent, elegant and fluent English. The first thing I did was to start reading English newspapers and English novels. I studied etymology and phonetics and studied the roots of the words and how to pronounce them. I used to stand in front of the mirror and practice speaking, realizing my mistakes and correcting them myself all the time and improvising and improving day by day. It took about 9 to 10 months by which time I started feeling quite confident about speaking in English at length with anybody. My fear had vanished and I started feeling at home in my hostel. In my future career, out of 32 years in information technology field, I was the chief executive or managing director or head of software company with thousands of software engineers worldwide. During that period I had to give several presentations or negotiate many contracts with the source, directors or VPs in the US, UK or Australia. I was absolutely at ease at that time. It is only due to the efforts at IIT that I could sign contracts worth millions of dollars worldwide and also run large global software companies. At IIT I got fairly good marks in my first two years. However, a very important thing happened while I was in my third year. I came in contact with about 15 to 20 extremely brilliant students, researchers, professors from IIT, TIFR and BARC. They included top-ranking students from IIT, visiting professors in American universities and very renowned mathematicians in the world and so on. I was instantaneously attracted to this group. This friendship had a lasting impact on my life. Until that time I used to consider myself somewhat intelligent. However, after I met my friends in our group, I came to know what real brilliance meant and I realized where I stood. I was actually also very lucky that I came in contact with great people on the global scale early in my life. Later in my life when Mr. Narayan Murthy left Patni to start Infosys, I started heading Patni's software division occupying the same chair. My head office was in Cambridge, Massachusetts, USA, very near Boston. It was in fact the adjacent building to MIT in America. I had to visit the US every few months in those days. I used to visit MIT during lunchtime to meet my friends. There, one could see a couple of Nobel laureates at the dining table. If you walked for an hour from there, you could reach Harvard Square near Harvard University. I used to visit both of these universities and could talk to a number of Nobel laureates. During these years I traveled a lot to US, Europe, Japan and Australia and could meet a number of great thinkers and management gurus such as Alvin Toffler, Peter Drucker, C. K. Prahlad, Tom Peters or great technologists such as Vincent Cerf, who designed TCP, IP which is the basic protocol of internet. All these discussions with these greats broadened my horizon and my aims and worldview became global. It taught me humility and made me realize that I had to achieve a lot in life.
The lesson in humility and hard work as well as passion for excellence was going to play a very important and vital role in my life. Coming back to my groups in IIT, my friends were not only more intelligent than me, but they were very well read. They had interest in all the subjects like science, technology, sociology, psychology, economics, philosophy, anthropology, archaeology, political science etc. Our group was interested in all of these branches apart from all the fine arts such as music, literature, painting. In short, our group was interested in almost anything under the sun and which concerned human life and existence. I was immediately attracted to the group and developed immense and deep interest in all these branches of knowledge. None of these subjects were part of our curriculum at IIT, but again, I never studied for scoring marks in any examination. Here was a sea of knowledge in front of me which I thought was necessary to pass the examination of life, which was far more important than just passing IIT examination. It is very difficult to become a master or an expert in all these subjects, but it was very important for me to understand at least the basic principles of most of these subjects. Any of us could easily top the grey examination and migrate to the US. However, that thought never even touched our minds. To understand the world and how it works and serving India and her people was far more important to us. Therefore, I plunged into all these branches of knowledge. It was a period of renaissance for me. We used to discuss about relativity, Big Bang, aesthetics, literature, philosophy, economics and many other subjects every day until late into the nights. My cupboard was full of books on a variety of topics. It is only because of the human curiosity that we have been able to make such a great progress in science and technology and social sciences. I have a number of limitations, but one thing I am proud of is the curiosity, humility and humanity, i.e., concern for our fellow human beings. I learned these values during my IIT days. I also became a firm believer in rationalism and equality for all the castes, creeds, races, genders and religions. I started treating nature as God and humanity as religion. I passed from IIT, joined a non-violent social movement for tribals with Sarvodaya, participated in a peaceful Satyagra, went to jail for 10 days, came back to Mumbai, was jobless for a while, worked for hours. 125 per month to supervise workers at the night shift in a mechanical workshop, changed 13 houses in Mumbai and finally settled on information technology as my career. I spent 32 years in information. Technology out of which I was a Chief Executive Officer or MD or the Software Head for 23 years for large global multinational software companies with thousands of software professionals worldwide and 6 offices in the US, 3 in Europe, 1 in Japan and 1 in Australia. I had to travel all over the globe around 150 times for business. During this period, I had also written 4 books with 500 to 700 pages each on information technology published by Tata McGraw Hill and then translated into Chinese for global distribution. I learned a lot of things when I was running these large companies. The first one was the importance of teamwork. In today's world, nothing is possible without teamwork. You cannot be successful if you are a loner and an egoistic person. Secondly, you need to lead from the front by setting a good example in front of your staff. Third was that you need to treat your subordinates and your colleagues as friends. In my career, I made a few mistakes, but learned a lot about motivation, being a good listener, target setting and the art of delegation which forms such an important part of today's management. After working for all these software companies for so many years, I wanted to return to my first love i.e. to read and write on various subjects concerning human life and existence. Therefore, I gave up two offers of around WS3100 INR per annum to become a writer. This is how my second innings avenue up two offers of around WNR per annum to become a writer. This is how my second innings I gave up two offers of around WS3100 INR per annum to become a writer. This is how my second innings as a writer in Marathi began. After this, I have written about 34 books in Marathi. Most of them have become bestsellers with tens of thousands of copies sold for each. However, it is not the sales or the money that is important to me as much as the fact that these books have brought about very good changes in the lives of thousands of readers.
After reading my autobiography, Musafir, and a book on psychology, man it, hundreds have come out of depression and more than a dozen have given up thoughts of committing suicide and decided to start all afresh. There are hundreds who tell me that they understood the theory of relativity or Big Bang after. Ding my book on science, Kimayagar. My book, Boardroom, on management has created at least 20 successful entrepreneurs. Then there are hundreds who tell me that they now can understand Economic Times or NDTV Profit after reading my book on Economics, Artha. Many have turned to Mathematics after reading my book on Mathematics, Ganiti. The same is true about my books on Indian Music, Nadwade, English Literature, Zaposa, Painting, Canvas, Western Films, Limelight, and Western Music, Symphony, or books such as Genius, Series, Rekta, or Vitamins, or Anartha. It is these reactions of thousands of readers and the feeling that I am touching the hearts of thousands, if not lakhs, of my readers that keeps me going. Why am I telling you my story? When I look back, there are a number of lessons and values that I cherish and keep learning about even today. Some of these are, thirst for knowledge, curiosity, humility, humanity, rationality, equality, teamwork, quest for excellence, never say die, thinking big. Achieve good bole.